Good evening. I'm Rip the Undertaker, your ghoul with the greatest of, uh, well, let's just say I dig up a lot of fun. I put the fun back in funerals as an Undertaker director, but it is very important to keep a room lively and not dead. Sorry, Undertaker joke. Let's see, a little bit about me. My costume was made by Joker Designs. They've done things for Aerosmith and other things like that. And uh, Chet Zar, the artist of the dark, commissioned this costume and uh, my character for an art show. That's where it all began. I've been featured in his documentary, I Like to Paint Monsters. It's coming to Son of Monster Palooza very soon, just a couple weeks. And I've seen it. It's glorious. I give the eulogy, the rolling credits have my voice echoing, rambling on and on and on. It's very exciting. But Chet's a longtime friend of mine. I love his art. He does creature portraiture. And he sort of got me into a range of different things. I, could, I curated an art show. I've been uh, at a range of conventions as a brand ambassador, scaring up business and digging up new fans. As you can imagine, it's kind of hard for me to hide, but actually at Scare LA, the most recent convention, I did a scare off with a friend of mine, a little competition to see who was scarier, and in broad daylight I was able to get people off guard consistently, so that's about me. Little about me. I give ghost tours in Hollywood, that's my night job. My day job is a butler. I toured with Dieter Von Tees, not in this get-up, no, no, as a proper British butler. I guess you could say I have split personality. I'm very nice and come highly recommended and I'll show up on time. But I do plan on being late for my own funeral. Yes. Sorry. Um, can you do the eight films to die for? Oh, I'm sorry. It's fine. Bloody hell. Yes, sorry. It's fine. You know something coming up are eight films to die for coming this October 16th. Be there or forever regret your decision. See, that was awesome. That was amazing. Okay. Do you have a good scream? Yeah. Can I hear it? Full volume? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, I was not as this character, but I was just on a show called Helivator for the Game Show Network. And we shot in a former. Um, Slaughterhouse downtown. It was lovely. No air conditioning. Yeah. But uh, if only if only people knew what the smells were there. But uh, contestants went through and I was one of the obstacles. So I played different characters. My my role, I guess, was a scare actor of sorts to get grip off guard. But the truth be told, I don't like the dark, pass out at the sight of blood, and honestly don't be, like being scared myself. I'm a total chicken. What's your favorite way to scare people? Oh, well, I, I've been accused of being a human statue a lot, where I just sort of stand still, you know. And then, you know, people come, I've done in-store things and that sort of thing, and people would just assume with all the Halloween props and everything, that's where I hang out, by the way. I don't hang out at Macy's or something like that. No, I'm a little more obvious there. No, Halloween stores, like the art store, and the uh, Halloween club, I've done things for them, so. So that's, um, you know, it's, it's the old-fashioned scare. Something out of the context of what you're expecting. Do you love horror movies? Oh, I do. But, but the tame ones, the classic ones. Nosferatu, black and white, you know, Hitchcock, oh my. Wonderful, wonderful. Knowing that the blood going down the drain is actually chocolate syrup makes me feel so much better, you know. But, uh, oh, I like Kubrick very much. The Shining. Oh my, I could watch The Shining. And I actually met the bartender from The Shining, Joe Turgar. I had a ten minute conversation with him. He's abs absolutely tremendous. He's also the doctor from uh, Blade Runner. That's, so. I feel like you could do the voice of the press, of the caretaker from The Shining. Or the bartender from The Shining. No, oh, I've gotten that What's as well. But I, yeah. when, when I'm in the get up, uh, my butler tucks. I, I've, and I'm also a certified bartender. So. You know, if worse comes to worse, if you don't need a host, I could always sling drinks. Do you mind saying a line from The Shining as the bartender? Do you know? Let's see. Uh, oh, I, I could quote Jack endlessly, but you're, okay. you caught me off guard. Okay, you can quote Jack. Right. 
Wendy, light of my life, I'm not going to hurt you. Listen to me. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm just going to bash your fucking brains out. That's all. <laughs> You're a tour guide for haunted places in Hollywood? Yes, for Dearly Departed. So it was, it was an established tour. I was a bit scared to do a you know, part. It's a walking tour. Insurance. You know, people can fall apart. Or I don't want to be blamed for that. And actually, you know, it would be wonderful publicity if somebody did not make it back from the tour. But, uh, you know, uh, Dearly Departed, for years they were doing graveline tours in the hearses, but the hearses kept on breaking down. And this is pre cell so it was a total nightmare. But, uh, so it's walking to us. And I drag bodies up and down the boulevard of broken dreams and broken bones, uh, basically showing them from the Knickerbocker down all the way to the Roosevelt Hotel to two hour tour. So if you don't mind listening to this voice for me, two hours rambling on and on and on about ghosts and goody things, then uh, do join. Is there, what, can you give us like one scary fact or haunted fact about Hollywood that we might not know? Of course. Peg Entwistle. Do you know who she is? Well, she was an actress who came here years ago. And uh, basically she decided that, you know, she wanted to make a bid. She had had success on the East End and then Broadway. And then she came here, had a contract with Arkham. And, and she uh, was dropped. Trivia. She was in a movie called 13 Women. 13 is a very unlucky number. The Hollywood sign had 13 letters originally. Hollywood Land. It was a promotional stunt by the real estate company. Well, when she was dropped by RKO, and when her husband became abusive, and when life was not going her way, she decided to take a little stroll up the hill. I have strolled that exact path all the way up the Utility Road, and I've actually touched the Hollywood sign. You can't do that now. No, no, the sense is too good. This was years ago. That was very bad. And I was drunk also. But needless to say, she leaped to her death from the age. And we have a piece of the original Hollywood sign in the store at that age. And it was the best career move of her life because we're still talking about her today. Peg it whistle. There you are. Awesome. Great job. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. You know, I, I, I have one more gift for you. Okay. And, and this is, uh, sorry, that's it. This is a complimentary ticket to any restaurant in Los Angeles. So you just go in, order the best meal. In fact, all of you should go in. Order only the best. Champagne for everyone. And caviar. And uh, just discreetly place this in your meal. I don't know if you've ever seen Victor and Victoria, but there you are. Place that in your meal, and your meal will be copped, and you will have the best wonderful time. And then, of course, order dessert, because, you know, life is short, and uh, we all got to go sometime, so you might as well have fun. And on that note, thank you so much for your time and listening to me to bore you to death. Any other questions, comments, concerns? You must have concerns. Could have concerns. I've never been... You, you believe it or not, the police don't stop me. And I certainly don't get harassed on the boulevard. People just leave me there and left. So if you want somebody that's that happy medium of, I don't know, commanding but, uh, you know, humorous and light, you know, I can provide, and tonality-wise, I can, you know, I understand this is probably not the type of character ending up in any of your films. I understand that. But if you want someone that's memorable to sort of engage people in different ways and catch them off guard, I'm very good at asking questions out of the blue that produce interesting answers. Thank you. And here's the full get-up. I can, I can wear it with the veil or without the veil. I was on the first street bridge at 1.30 a.m. doing a photo shoot two nights ago. So I'm all around town. You never know where I'm going to pop up.